more talk with Bolt Thrower on the way now. And as the band is a democracy, I'm now joined by two more members. Very pleased to welcome Gavin and Baza. And, uh, of course, you've got a lovely, lovely lady bass player, Jo, and she's actually away doing some more interviews. So, unfortunately, we won't, we won't be meeting Jo tonight. But we are going to talk about her a little bit later on. Um, but, uh, Gavin, if we could sort of uh, talk a little bit about Bolt Thrower musically. Um, obviously, your music is very intricate. Do you find that you ha have to walk a fine line between being intricate and being kind of s over, s like self-indulgent kind of thing? Oh, partly. Um, from my point of view, I don't think we are intricate. I think we're pretty uh, basic. Oh. The music's pretty basic, and that's what we've really always looked for. Mm -hmm. I've all seen, I've all seen all the techno bands that do techno death metal, and mm -hmm. and they release some good LPs. They come live, and they're shit because they can't reproduce it. Mm -hmm. Whereas we try and keep it as basic as possible always. So it's very important to you that in what you actually do in the studio, you'd be able to reproduce yes, exactly course. live. Yeah, we don't do anything that we can't reproduce live. It's, I think it's just screwing the kids. Mm -hmm. Anyone can release good LPs from a studio and be good bands, but then, then not to give them what you are live is, is disgusting, really. Production-wise, you kind of go for like a very live feel as well in the production. Partly live. I don't mind about the production, mm -hmm. sort of doing more tricks right. in the production, really. It's just more just reproducing what we are. Because a lot of viewers have written in and asked if Carl uses any vocal effects on, on, on his vocals, but obviously from what you've said... No, just um, obviously basic stuff, maybe a touch of chorus now and again, and a touch of delay on here and there, but no, no voice boxes, mm -hmm. no effects like that, just make him sound more evil or not. It, it's that'd be the same then would have to use it live and we screw them again right. well I, I appreciate your attitude I think that's really cool that you've you've you kind of follow that um, now let's uh, talk a little bit about the album cover which you can see on your screen right now as we speak it's a 18th century painting I believe yeah. quite a well-known painting um, what, what was your inspiration to use that for the album cover and did it inspire the song of the, the title song the fourth crusade and no, we already actually had it, the Fourth Crusade. We already knew the album was going to be called that. We were looking for an actual um, artwork or painting that was around the Fourth Crusade, which we obviously found, <laughs> which is um, a painting by Della Crow of the uh, ransacking of Constantinople by the Crusaders. So it fitted well. Fourth Crusade is obviously fitted with a song title. It was our fourth album, our fourth European tour, and it all came in fours. <laughs> kind of sounds like going into battle, though. Is that... Do you kind of see it as that, like going against the grain kind of thing? Yeah, always. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about Jo, actually, because I really admire her, um, what she does in the band. It's very, obviously, unusual to have a woman in rock music, let alone in a kind of very heavy, brutal band. Um, and I have to say, she is sleeping on this bus with 18 young men, so it uh, can't be that bad, can it? Um, <laughs> not so young. <laughs> um, Bazo, do, do you find that um, having a female bass player adds kind of a different perspective um, to Bolt Thrower? Uh, yeah, I suppose it would, really. I mean, there's no other bands that I can think of that have a female bassist in, you know, apart from the old hardcore bands, which is basically where we all stemmed from anyway. We always used to be punks, hardcore. So I think that's what a lot of our ideals come from as well, definitely from the hardcore scene. When people, you know, used to... Say we're hardcore and we started off, then we turned into grindcore and then it was death metal. They can't put a label on us, but I think basically inside, yeah. inside we're all hardcore, basically. But it wasn't really a, a perspective, it was bringing a girl bass player in to add a new angle. Mm -hmm. It was, um, the way it worked was, we needed a bass player at that time. She was into the band, she could already play some of the material. She learnt the set in seven days, ready to gig. Clever and girl. Yeah, and that's what it was really about. It wasn't really girl, boy or anything like that she could do the job that we needed and that's what it was all about so she gets treated the same as any other member in theory she's a man when she's with us <laughs> although she isn't if you get what i mean i know what yeah. you're saying yeah. you mentioned um earlier the hardcore um influence on the on the band now obviously that's not um just music it's a philosophy as well that you know they're on this these bands are on the same level as their fans is that important to you as well um yeah as long as there's respect we don't respect anyone that doesn't respect us. If, if a fan comes up and like stage dives and has a good night, and that's that's great. If he comes and trapples all over it, we'll sort it. Do you know what I mean? Be the, the, warned. Yeah, there's a respect thing. Yeah. Expected. Um, we don't. We don't. I don't jump off the stage and go and trample on top of ten people in the audience. Do you know what I mean? So I don't expect it to happen to me. I, I, 
I do what I do because I enjoy it, and that's it. Stage diving is great. Isn't it? It's great when the kids you know, come up and dive off stage. It's just get on, get off. You know, don't trample all over the pedals and bang into me or anything like that. Sometimes. And then, then you're ruining it for the other 99% you know, of the crowd that just want to watch a good show. You know, when they come and bang into your guitars, trample all over your MIDI pedals, it's just like, you know, the noise is just terrible. Sometimes we've been pushed out the way for stage divers <laughs> to get by. They've actually pushed us to one side and then they've dived off like, and that's no respect there at all. So there's loads more dates to go on the Bolt Thrower Tour, and uh, the message is to you guys out there, um, stage dive with respect. Okay, so uh, th thanks very much to, uh, and buy a t-shirt, <laughs> and thanks very much to all of you, and uh, good, good luck with the rest of the tour. Have thanks fun. A lot. featuring Vader and of course a bolt thrower. Now the tour has got a load more dates to go all across Europe and you're going to see the remaining dates on your screen at the end of this report. And I'd also like to point out that there's another band on the tour called Grave and we're going to be meeting up with them another time. So watch out for that. Check out the tour right across Europe. I'm going to sign off from Copenhagen now. We've got a short break coming up. I'll see you back in the studio in London.